It has been a journey, five years in the making, but Merrick Garland is finally set to face senators for a confirmation hearing. Garland was former President Obama's pick to fill a vacant Supreme Court seat, but Republicans blocked that effort. Now, President Biden wants him to serve as his attorney general. So Nicole Killian is on Capitol Hill ahead of today's hearing. Nicole, how is this time going to be different for Judge Garland? He has Republican support this time around and is likely to win confirmation. And of course, while Mayor Garland does have a reputation largely as an impartial judge today in this room, he's going to face a lot of questions about some very highly partisan issues. In his opening statement, Garland makes clear that he wants to keep his role free from political pressure and outlines his priorities, writing the attorney general is to serve the rule of law and to ensure equal justice under the law. He will also address the insurrection and say, I will supervise the prosecution of white supremacists and others who stormed the Capitol on January 6. Now, some of the tougher questions that Garland is expected to face include whether he would consider prosecuting former President Trump for his role in those attacks. Republicans are also expected to ask him about how he might handle the ongoing investigation into President Biden's son Hunter, as well as the federal probe into New York Governor Andrew Cuomo on COVID and nursing homes. Now, this morning, we are learning that one of the other president's uh, nominees may be facing some roadblocks. That is Neera Tandon, uh, the president's pick for the Office of Management and Budget. This morning, Maine Senator Susan Collins came out saying that she will oppose her nomination. And so when you take that into account, along with the fact that Joe Manchin of West Virginia, a Democrat, also plans to oppose, she may not have the votes needed for confirmation. Anne-Marie? Um, Nicole, back to... Um uh, Eric Garland there, um, uh, sorry, Merrick Garland. Um, Democrats were really, really critical of the former Attorney General William Barr uh, during his tenure. Uh, President Biden really made it a point of uh, when he introduced Garland as his nominee to say, listen, your job is to serve the American people, not this administration. How much do you think the prior um, the prior attorney general, William Barr, how much do you think he will be sort of a focus of the questioning um, during the uh, hearing today? I think it's likely to come up, but I think at the, its core, uh, Democrats, again, are going to try to get at this issue of how to really handle the former president, especially in light of how the impeachment trial ended. Of course, the former president was acquitted, but then you'll remember that pretty stinging speech that my, Minority Leader Mitch McConnell gave, uh, in essence, you know, saying that, uh, you know, the former president could still be open uh, to prosecution. And so I think that is a theme that you will likely see Democrats hit on quite a bit. You know, the other thing to note is that certainly we've already seen from Merrick Garland's opening statement, uh, him really stressing the importance of independence in the judiciary, which, you know, was an issue during the Trump administration. And certainly uh, the former Attorney General William Barr came under fire uh, on a number of occasions uh, for almost uh, acting like the president's attorney. That was kind of the accusation that he faced, you know, for mm -hmm. his role in a number of cases. And so uh, to that extent, I think you will see Merrick Garland again stress uh, that he does plan to be an independent uh, prosecutor for, for the Justice Department. You know, you point out that he is is enjoying sort of bipartisan support. And I've heard people say that, you know, that he may be really the man for the moment, um, better than actually if he had become the Supreme Court justice. He worked in the um, Justice Department for some time. He was sort of a key point person during the Oklahoma bombing. Can you give us a little more about his background and the kind of respect that he enjoys? Well, he obviously had enough respect to be nominated for the Supreme Court. And as you mentioned, you know, that didn't go so well for him because uh, his nomination was obstructed. But uh, really, for the last few decades, he has been on the appellate court here in D.C., the circuit court, uh, and has held that role for a number of years, uh, becoming chief judge. And so that really is ultimately what led to him being nominated for uh, the Supreme Court. And as you mentioned, you know, he does have a record of serving 
serving in the Justice Department uh, in uh, his prior uh, portion of his tenure, where he did have a role not only in the Oklahoma bombing investigation, but also uh, with respect to the uh, Olympics investigation uh, some time ago as well. So uh, certainly has a lot of experience, uh, not only within justice, not only within the judicial system as a whole, uh, but uh, sir, I expect that he will also kind of highlight that background uh, when he comes before lawmakers today. Totally, and a lot of experience with extremism, domestic terrorism, uh, two topics that we've been talking a lot about here on CBSN. Um, besides confirmation hearings for President Biden's cabinet nominees, Democrats on Capitol Hill are also trying to take a big step forward with the COVID-19 relief package. What can we expect this week to happen with that? Yeah, well, that's going to move pretty quickly here in the House if Democrats have their way. They want a vote on this package by the end of the week. It's still estimated to cost about $1.9 trillion, and a number of Republicans are balking at that price tag. So at the end of the day, it may not have Republican support. Democrats may have to push this on their own, which they've already laid the groundwork to do so uh, through this process of reconciliation. Of course, some of the key elements of this package include things like another round of stimulus checks for Americans of up to $1,400. Uh, you know, there is more uh, unemployment benefits uh, relief. There is, uh, you know, aid for state and local governments, uh, more aid to help schools reopen, additional funding for a vaccine distribution. So it really, in Democrats' view, is an all-inclusive package, even includes a provision to raise the minimum wage. That is probably one of the more controversial aspects of this bill, which uh, may not clear the Senate if it does, in fact, clear, clear the House. Yeah, we will see. Republicans have been pushing back on that price tag. Uh, Nicole, thank you very much. You bet. So Merrick Garland's confirmation, in case you were not paying attention earlier, uh, that is set to get underway at 9.30 a.m. Eastern right here. At 9 Eastern, we're going to bring you a preview of our coverage and give you a sense of what to expect today.